Welcome back to another 3D printing video. Today I'm going to be 3D printing Harry Potter's wand. I've made a few wands in the past and they're kind of cool to make, but what's interesting about these is that they're not just simply a work of art or the ability to make props or a 3D printer completely. I feel like it's a combination of all of those. I recently made one for somebody and they were they were kind of amazed at what it was and they were looking at it and they were they were just staring at it, just looking at the different sides of it. And they asked me how I made it and it was 3D printed, but it wasn't, it was kind of complicated for me to explain because yes, it was 3D printed, but I printed it in four parts. And after I printed it in four parts, I then glued it together. After I glued it, I worked on the seams. I had sanded it. There were layer lines that didn't make it look like a convincing wand. I worked on a little bit more. I painted it several layers, several times. There were some base coats. There were some second coats. After I'd got the initial layers that I wanted, I then painted the two colors that the wand had. Then after that, I spray painted a gloss to finish it. All those, all those pieces came together, all those parts of the puzzle came together in such a way that I ended up with, with something that I wouldn't have been able to do without the 3D printer, but the 3D printer would not have been able to do by itself either. So today I'm going to be showing you that process with the wand. And right now I just started the print. It's gonna take probably a few hours and this one is to scale, so it's, it's the right length for Harry Potter's wand. And so I'm going to print it, it's going to be in a few pieces. I should document the process so you guys can see how it goes. That way you can know how I make these things. So uh, let's jump in the next part. Okay, so the 3D print finished. And this is what it looks like coming right off of the build plate. It's got a brim around it that ensures that it sticks to the build plate. So basically that holds it to it. And after you're done printing, you get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now clean up the print. You can see all four pieces are right there. We got half of the handle, other half of the handle, and then most of the, the other shaft, other part of the shaft is right there. After I get this cleaned up, then I'm gonna glue it together. Okay, so at this point, I've taken off all of the waste material, and that just gets thrown away. There are some ways you can reuse that, but at this point, I don't have an easy, um, good way to do that. So that's, that's waste. Now we have our wand pieces. The way I cut this up is, is uh, into four pieces like that. So if I were to have chopped it right in the middle and right in the middle both ways, it would be structurally uh, flimsy. But because I have it overlapping, it has the strength to hold it together rather than breaking right in the middle after I put it together. First, I'm going to glue it together. Now, one of the best types of glues to use, I think, is super glue. But I currently don't have any of that. I should get some. But Another glue that works well for a project like this is hot glue. And hot glue isn't super structurally uh, great, but what it does provide is the ability to work with it after you've, you've made it. So super glue is really hard after you've, after you've used it. It's hard to sand, it's hard to cut. Um, you can do it, but it just takes a little while. Hot glue, on the other hand, is like a rubber almost. So once you've put it together, you can use the, the end of the hot glue gun to then smooth out the glue you've used, or you can use an X-Acto knife to trim off the excess, which is nice, you can do extra. For example, if these don't meet together perfectly after the print, I can use the hot glue to fill in the gaps, and then I can smooth it out, round it off with the tools that I have. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so I finished up hot gluing and uh, shaving that with uh, my X-Acto knife. That took a bit longer, and the, the hot glue gun is doing something weird. It was actually squirting out extra stuff when I didn't need it. So what I'm going to do right now, since it's hard to distinguish the highs and lows and where the detail is and isn't, I'm going to do um, pretty much just a base layer, just a, a coat of paint um, to see what things are looking like. 
and hopefully if I do thick enough layer two, it can fill in some of those cracks so I can work on more detail as I go. Okay, so here's where we're at so far. I, uh, I base coated it with uh, just some, some brown acrylic paint. It shouldn't stick super well, but um, it should be enough to kind of give me a good idea of, of how it is. I, I cut more material off and then I coated it again. Then I also used some uh, 3D dimensional fabric paint. So it's kind of like a paint that keeps its shape um, to fill in some more of the cracks and to give the handle some more texture. You can see it's got the darker spots that are raised more is that. So in the original model or the original design of Harry Potter's wand, um, the handle is rough like a piece of wood directly off of a tree or something. And then this part is rough too, but the rest of it is smooth. And right now, I don't like how it's blurry. Right now, a majority of it is rough. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to uh, kind of smooth out that end. So I'm going to keep working on this, keep painting it, keep smoothing it down. Uh, maybe chopping off some of the extra roughness in the wrong spots. And uh, and then after that, I'm going to paint it while trying to color match the paints in the reference photos that I have. Okay, so I think I've worked on this enough as far as the shape of it and the base coat. So you can see right there that it's got the rough wooden handle that kind of comes out to there that's still rough. And then once it gets to that point, it gets a little bit smoother it's not perfect, and it also kind of looks as though it's been like handmade. Um, or as if, I mean, if, if you got a piece of wood and got a knife and you were to carve this wand in its original format, let's say, carve this out of a twig, you would have some uh, imperfect cut marks. Anyway, my point is that I'm going to leave it as is, as far as its shape. So, in the pictures, and the reference photos that I'm using, there's two colors. There's one color for the wand from this point out, and there's one for basically the knotty piece of wood right there. This piece of wood is about this color. It's like a darker brown. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush a little bit of a lighter brown on top of that. Now what dry brushing is, is where you get your, I've told you guys this before, if you've checked out my other videos, where you get your brush a little bit wet and you wipe out most of the paint on something else. Then when you get to the, the thing you're painting, you just have let a little bit of the paint come off the edge of the brush as you lightly go over the top. You're not digging in, you're not smashing it into the cracks. What you want to do is you want it to touch the highlights. So for example, if you see what the light's doing this right now, the, the higher spots are lighter and the darker spots are like the crevices. So you're trying to mimic that. You're trying to mimic both shadows and wear and tear. If you have some, an object that's being used a lot, this is going to get dirt and grime in the edges of it and the cracks and you're going to rub off the dirt from the outside, so it's going to be kind of clean. Not really, but kind of. And on top of that, we also have this lighting effect where the light is going to touch the higher surfaces, and the ones that are creviced or darker or deeper to get, they're going to be a darker color. So that this wood is already dark enough for the project, what I'm going to do is just dry brush on the lighter brown. After that, we're going to move on to this part that's a little bit of an orange or brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brown that I used for this and I'm going to mix in some orange. And I'm going to coat the whole thing. And that should be good enough. It shouldn't be a bright orange. It should look like an authentic piece of wood, at least more so, or a stained piece. And then when those two are done, I'm going to coat this with a clear coat to seal in the paint. Using acrylic paint and acrylic wears off, it kind of dries on soft. Um, rather than being hard, and it's not brittle either, but you can scrape it off easily. So I'm going to want to clear coat that and make sure that the, the area that's getting wear and tear will be a protective clear layer. So I'm going to do that. You guys can hopefully see the process through a time lapse.
now that I've completed painting this, I'm going to do the final coat. Okay, so I finished the wand. It's right here. I think it turned out okay. Um, I was in a little bit of rush because I do have school to do, but I'm okay with the way that it turned out. So I did make a terrible mistake right at the end. I, uh, I decided to put painter's tape on it to, uh, to separate the handle from the rest of it and so I could spray paint this matte and this shiny. But what the problem was that it ripped off paint once I took the tape off. So I had to re-go over that area. It didn't take very long, but you can probably see where the blemish is right there, where it kind of ripped off some paint. Um, but that's, that's okay because, like I said earlier, this isn't a machined piece. I'm not replicating something that a machine made, I'm replicating something that a human made. And when a human makes something, there's going to be errors in it, and that's going to be okay. Especially if the thing that I'm replicating wasn't even made by a person. For example, this handle is made by a tree, which is an imperfect thing. So I'm okay with the way this turned out. I'm going to give this to a friend, and I think I'm going to call it there. This video is for you guys to understand a little bit better the process in which I make things. It comes out of the 3D printer, but that's only the beginning of the process. And it takes time with maybe glues and paints and different stuff to work it to a place where I'm happy to give it to somebody or happy to put on my shelf where I get to look at it from time to time. So that's the process. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It does help a lot, especially because this channel is so small. Each like is hugely more important than it would be to a larger channel, so it's much more appreciated. If you like this content, please hit subscribe. And if you're interested in seeing some of the stu other stuff that I've done, I've got other videos on the channel all the way back from a few years ago that I've done. So please check those out. If you enjoy the content, stick around. I'd love to see you in the comments. Let me know what your favorite part was. If you're an expert prop maker, I'd love to see what ideas you'd have that would maybe streamline this process, make it easier or make the product better. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.